welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on the test server on the free to play account and we are checking out the Arcane Labyrinth. Now the Arcane Labyrinth does have two modes. Um, one is the normal mode, one is the dismal mode. Dismal mode, increasingly difficult depending on the heroes you have. When you first unlock it, it is going to be very challenging because it does require a certain team. But today, guys, we are going to look at the normal labyrinth. So notice you're about to enter the arcane labyrinth's normal mode. Only one maze may be played at a time. So once I go into normal mode, dismal mode will not actually be an option. Now looking in here, I use the, the path of the most resistance. Now what I mean by that is I make sure that I fight as absolute as many stages that I can in here while limiting how many abandoned wagons I take, how many fountains of vitality, um, making sure even the abandoned wagon up here that I am missing all of these. Big reason for this is the loot. So you wanna make sure that you're maximizing the loot that you get out of here. Um, each one of these battles do give you a considerable amount of labyrinth tokens. That is really what you're looking for, but you also do pick up experience and you pick up golden coins as well as relic drops. Now, one thing to pay attention to is in a formation such as this, you wanna check these wagons and see exactly what heroes you do have available in here, such as Mishka or Mortis. Um, making sure, again, looking at Thane right here, possibly Rowan, that you're picking heroes that could be vital to your formation. Now, also in here, guys, you can use Dura's Tears. Dura's Tears will be able to let you recite the formation you have um, from heroes that have died. So if I have a, a um, group of heroes, such as like when I go in here in battle, if I do have five heroes in here and those five heroes do die, Dura's Tears will actually bring them right back so you can use them again, which is very cool to see. So the common formation that I run in here is double support, guys. So I want to run Rowan in here, um, run Merlin in here if you do have them, Silas in here, Desiro we see. I run Taylene within this formation. I'm really relying on the damage output that we're getting out of Ainz, but ultimately I want two separate support heroes that are kind of going to provide healing for this formation. A couple of heroes that you do have to be really cautious about within here is one, of course, we know, um, which is Thorin, guys. Thorin is one that has the taint ability, very difficult to deal with, especially if you do have the opportunity um, to get that taint ability. You can kill out one of your heroes super fast, which again can be completely devastating. Zorath is another hero to kind of look out for because you do have to win the battle twice. But looking right there, we do pick up some Labyrinth tokens. We also do pick up some extra ones. Now, when it comes to the relic selection, guys, um, you always want to look for the elite over the rare. Depending what it is, there are also legendary relics. The insolence is a really strong one because this will actually require the, the front line to go ahead and attack themselves. I'm going to pass on this bridge because I'm going to take Mortis out of the abandoned wagon. And now the path we're going to take is actually straight up through the middle. And then we're actually going to move straight all the way up again making sure that we are doing the path of the most resistance so we can maximize the um, the relics that we get out of here and also the loot. If you're picking some of the abandoned wagon, if you're picking a, a lot of the things of that nature, you're going to be missing out on an incredible amount of loot, which will kind of make the long-term effect here a, a, a big negative effect. Now, out of these ones, guys, if you're running a couple Graveborns, which we are, we do have Silas, we do have um Damon in here so definitely picking these up if you're running a tank which some formations do not utilize a tank you can always do this one then of course life leech I do not like the life leech life leech plus 25 percent if you don't have life life leech I know it does a little bit but ultimately guys this will be the tome of necromacy if you are running any graveborn this is super important for them guys and we'll just continue through here another hero you do have to be kind of wary about um is Athelia Athelia is another hero that will kill out your team very quick because she can single target one specific hero, putting a bleed effect on them. Again, picking up some more relics out of here. This is one of our newer relics, Celestial Blessings. I love this one. At the start of battle, allied heroes are immune to controlled effects and receive 40 energy points every second for four seconds. That is right, guys. Each allied Celestial on the battlefield prolongs the effect by one second. That is right, we are running Taylene, so we are going to get five seconds out of here, meaning the beginning of battle is going to provide us with a very big energy boost in there, guys. 
And this is just kind of a, a quick rundown again of the abyssal expedit, or excuse me, the, um, the the labyrinth, really tips and tricks of what we look at. Um, the embrace, not really super important. The crit rating is nice if you're running wilders. The wilders wisp is awesome. And then the cape of dexterity, if you're running rangers in here, this will do very well. We're not running any rangers. So ultimately you have to pick which relic is gonna make sense to the formations you're running. If I was running, you know, like an Eron in here, could be a definite possibility to pick up the Ranger Relic. If you're running heroes such as Pharrell, um, I really focus on running Eins in here, doing the most damage and focusing on everything that you get with the, the, the damage of the Mage class. So one interesting is the Energy Shards, guys. If you get one, it does not do anything. You have to have two, three, or four shards to go ahead and get the effects. There is also a shard, um, I believe it's a shard combiner, which you can get multiple shards, or it doubles the effect of the shards, guys. Now in here, you've seen Taylene died pretty quick. Now Taylene will come back to life. Both Taylene and the Awakened version will come back to life when she dies in battle, making it super efficient to run in here. Health regen, pretty decent. Agility, not really running many agility but reduces the damage friendly backline heroes receive by 50 percent while the front line's alive very strong for the book of war awesome relic to have within here guys and you'll see most of these formations um when eins alts it's pretty much game over for a majority of the enemy team we also did have um we had nimitsu that actually dropped haste right on eins because of the the ability that we had earlier Stacking poisons, most of the time they do not live long enough. The the um, Yidrasil's branch, not very important unless you're running um, minimal to no support heroes. So definitely going with the Graveborn. Increases all teammates attack rating by 6% for every Graveborn. That's right, guys. We're running double Graveborn here. Mythic, we don't need because that will bring back a random hero. We do not have any heroes that are dead. Bringing us to the completion of the very first floor, guys. Now, this is something that resets every two days, you want to make sure 100% that you're running through this every two days, guys. Because again, the loot in here will allow you to get Arthur. It will allow you to get your um, your emblems of space, which are very important, copies of Wukong. You'll also be able to get red chests out of utilizing your rewards in here. And it also gives you diamonds when you complete different floors. Now looking in here, guys, we're not running any Maulers. Defense, always pretty good, but think of your primary damage with the Ions. Each time allied mages receive 400 energy, their damage is increased by 10%, stacking five times, guys. That is huge. That, that is absolutely vital to making the formation that I'm running in here work. So even here, like I said, past the path of most resistance, we will not be taking the, the fountain because we want to make sure we're getting as many battles as we can within the time frame that we have to, again, maximize your damage. And you can see their Eins went to zero, guys. Absolutely got destroyed right there. Um, that's what happens a lot of times with some of the heroes that you're fighting. This one, we have Rage Spike, more damage. The friendly central backline normal attacks remove a majority of buffs. Now, this is a really big one with the Dispelling Arrow because of Brutus and their shields. Um, this will actually get rid of it. I, I like getting it at least once to carry in here. And of course, look at this. We have three lineup. If we go to this right one, we're going to have to take two, including um, the Roamer and this Fountain of Vitality. Again, path of the most loot. Make sure we go to this left one to only pick up one additional place. Boom, ulted so hard, didn't even have to see it on that one. But this one, if we're running light bearers, definitely good. Maulers we don't have, my heroes do not want to die. Big thing to notice, increases all def uh, teammates' defense by 15% for every light bear on the battlefield. That is right, guys. Light bears do not have to be in my formation. They just have to be in the battlefield, making that a pretty good relic. Abandoned Wagon, again, look at the heroes that you're building. Um, I'm going to go with some more support just in case one of my support heroes do die. And then mapping, we're going to go up into the right on this one again to maximize your um, loot that you get out of here. Ultimately picking up the Fountain of Vitality. If I do lose a hero by this little mark right in the middle, I can branch off to the left and use the Mythic to bring back one of my fallen heroes. 
but ultimately I don't think I'm going to need to. We have enough heroes in here to sub out a couple of them if we do need to. And of course, guys, the old school Taylene at Mythic just doing very well. Allied Celestial Heroes, if you're not running any Celestials, this will do nothing for you. Defense is only strength-based heroes, so again, if you're not running those, the Aegis would be good. Since I do have Taylene, um, we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of more crowd control in there for her to really make her effective, guys. And we're just waiting for, boom, Ein's alts, five kills, makes it super convenient and pretty easy to go through here. Um, restores the weakest teammate. 30% over 50, after 15 seconds. Most of the battles don't last 15 seconds. I'm running double support. Don't need the Heaven's Grace Shard of Intelligence. Definitely picking up that one as well. So we can continue to, again, focus on Ainz and focus on the damage that he's putting out. Now this one, again, looking at Thorin, um, I usually take off auto just like I did right there. Thorin's taint ability, especially if you alt, will kill you out very fast. Now, Idol of Savagery, um, Heroes that have more than 95% health at the beginning will have attack rating increased by 20%. Absolutely, guys, we are running double support in here, meaning the probability of these heroes having over 90%, just like we see with Ainz completely maxed out, boom, 20% bonus to the attack rating, allowing him to just decimate all of the battle in here. And again, Celestial Fury, definitely good when you're running on the Celestial Heroes, but we are focused on Ainz. And you can actually do this with a couple different heroes. Um, a lot of players carry with Shamira early. You can do it with Oden, a mage. Um, you can also do this with, again, a couple other heroes like Damon. A lot of players run a very solid carry in here running Damon. Um, works surprisingly well. Even there, Ayn's got two alts off fairly quickly and still maintained a little bit of his energy in that one. Now, we got the tanks. Enemies fighting within the enemy half, which doesn't happen very much. This one is actually amazing. Start a battle, each allied hero steals 20% of the health from the enemy opposed to them and creates a shield. Hypogens do get an increased amount, but you'll see in just a moment when we get to this last battle or this um, second floor battle right here, the health of the enemy side will go down 20% when they join. Boom, there is the 20% reduction as you can see making Ainz only have to kill out 80% of that remaining health. I don't even think I need to alt here, guys. Seems like it's going to be a pretty no-brainer. Now, when you finish the second floor, um, again, depending on where you are, this one we're going to pick up some more health and defense, which is awesome. Elixir, usually the enemies die out. And then Life Leech, again, I don't really use very much. But this is going to give you, of course, a little bit of loot. Now, this is going to be where you have to make a decision if you are doing well in here, the hard mode is a way to go because you actually fought, fight a boss in here. And that is the route that we're gonna go. This is actually the easier mode. So if you just unlock this hard mode in the regular Arcane Labyrinth, I would definitely go the easy mode, at least for the first couple days before you move to the hard mode, which looks pretty dangerous. So again, looking at the path of the most resistance or the most battles, what you wanna do is make sure the Cave of Treasures, this is your goal, guys. The loot in here is absolutely crazy. So moving over, we can use the Mystic or the Fountain. We do not want to use this Dark Wagon. If you defeat this hero, you get it. Very tough. Most of the times you do lose heroes when you're fighting the Dark Wagon. There is no reason to really ever use it because it is very, very hard to defeat. Now, one of the things I also don't use in here is the Roamer. Um, I save my diamonds specifically for summons or for stargazing. I don't use them to buy red chests out of here. I don't use them to buy loot. Now out of here, um, deal more damage the lower your HP falls. I do not use that because again, I'm running double support. Defense is always good, but causing a random enemy target to take more damage. Absolutely, guys. I, I want them to take maximized damage. Like I said in here, I, I do not buy these with diamonds, even with the red chest at a discounted rate. Um, I would save my diamonds for summons because that's actually quite a few diamonds. So we're going to go with the fountain again. And remember, guys, we are shooting to pick up this cave of treasures. That is what we are really focused on right now to continue with the clear in here. Boom. Got to be careful of Brutus. Remember, see, you can pause it right there. If you look at Brutus, guys, just tore us apart as well as Kalthar. So Kalthar will actually come back 
as the spectral form. The spectral form will burn you down very, very fast, guys. Even here, I'm hoping, see, we, we still lost Silas. And that was the spectral form and how much crazy, insane damage that he does. Big, big relic in here, guys. Sunstone, Moonstone absolutely are a big priority. Just like the Fire and Icebringer, absolutely taking those priority number one. Now, we lost a support hero. We're going to have to drop in um, Rowan. We did pick up Helios and we did pick up Mortis. But ultimately, when you pick them out of the wagon, they're not as strong as the regular ones that you use. Meaning, you'll see a, a, lot, a, a lot different build. They usually die relatively quick within there. But we're almost done with our run. Don't have any Wilders in here. Um, we only have one single Fountain of Vitality left, so not too worried about that. But the Cardinal Grip could be really good. Restoring HP if we kill an enemy. Absolutely want that, guys. Also keep in mind, when you're looking at the camps, this one, we have Alna and Oden. Two very tough combinations, especially with Grez. This one, a little bit easier running Hendrik and Gorvo. I would definitely go this route just because looking at the two camps, um, this one is definitely easier. Aileen, of course, dies a little bit. But when Ein's ults, boom, that usually takes down a majority of the enemies at that point, guys. All right, so we got a couple more here. Frontline defense, we do have that health regeneration. I'm going to go with the frontline, trying to keep them up and alive. Now, Cave of Treasures, this is a um, Riz boss which is just like the guild boss, but ultimately you can usually kill him pretty quick. Again, the support is going to be kind of relying on there. He does have the buffs from some of the relics that we have, meaning that he is losing a lot of HP really fast. Didn't even get to alt. Taking him down pretty quick. Boom, 316 million damage on that. And we wanted the lab tokens. Um, definitely one of the strongest things to get out of here. Again, be careful of this one, guys. You have Thorin, you have Kelthar. Kelthar is even running with the plus 60 engraving, meaning the probability of us losing a hero in here is relatively high, um, even when we get the alt off, because we're going to have to kill Kelthar twice, or we're going to have to kill Thorin twice. We're going to have to make sure that our Ainz is staying alive through the immunity factor. We just killed him once. Take off the auto. Killed him, still looking pretty solid on the team, guys. If you would have lost a hero in here, critical strike, we already got some more HP and defense, so we will go with the Shadowfall critical strike. If we did lose a hero, we could hit up the Mystic. We could bring the hero back. Ultimately, Fountain of Vitality is the way we're going to go. Then we have the boss. So this is the final battle, guys. Three floors of the Arcane Labyrinth, three floors of the Dismal Maze. Boom, we got an alt, which pretty much killed everybody, making this a pretty clean run. As long as Ainz can alt a second time, cleans it up very easy and smooth. These are what we're looking for, Poe coins, plus we picked up some extra diamonds. Awesome. Also did get some heroic merit, meaning that we're going to be able to get some rewards out of the shop. And our final chest here, guys, gives us, of course, elemental cores. Absolutely love the engraving mats, as well as some other loot out there. We finished this 74 times already, and that will conclude it for the Arcane Labyrinth, guys. Just a quick tips and tricks for a lot of new players that are relatively, um, th that are newer to AFK Arena, newer to Labyrinth. A lot of players have been asking for this. So guys, let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.